up from where we left off in our video on cervical cancer, we're going to discuss about the association of oral contraceptive pills, specifically combined OCPs, and the different types of cancer, and share with you these mnemonics so you can easily remember their correlations. You might be encountering a few questions, particularly in gynecology or public health, that ask whether the following are true or not. True or false? Combined oral contraceptive pills decrease the risk of cervical cancer. True or false? COCs has no effect on colon cancer. True or false? COCs increase the risk of breast cancer. Or, true or false, COCs neither increase nor decrease the risk of ovarian cancer. In the actual exam, it could be presented as a case like a 39-year-old woman has been using combined oral contraception since she gave birth to her second child two years ago. She's worried as her friend told her that OCPs increase the risk of cancer. The risk of which of the following types of cancer will significantly be increased with long-term use of oral contraceptive pills. A. Breast cancer B. Endometrial cancer C. Colon cancer D. Cervical cancer or E, ovarian cancer. You might find this confusing at times, so here is a mnemonic for you. Think of this mnemonic when asked of the types of cancer that are decreased by OCPs. Cool OCPs protect you. Cool for colon or colon, O for ovarian, particularly epithelial type, and U for uterine or endometrial. Again, cool OCPs protect you, meaning OCPs decrease the risk of colon, ovarian, and uterine cancer. On the other hand, think of the mnemonic be careful when being asked what types of cancer are increased by OCPs, B for breast and C for cervical. OCPs increase the risk of breast and cervical cancers. You shouldn't be confused with the two C's, colon and cervical, because cool is for colon and the other C is for a cervical. So let's try answering these questions. True or false, combined oral contraceptive pills decrease the risk of cervical cancer. Cervical cancer is found in the mnemonic B, careful, B for breast, and C for cervical. Be careful of OCPs because they may increase and not decrease the risk of these cancers. So the answer is false. It should be increase. Next, COCs has no effect on colon cancer. Think of cool OCPs protect you from colon, ovarian, and uterine. The answer is false. It should be decrease. Next, COCs increase the risk of breast cancer. Again, breast is found in the mnemonic be careful of OCPs because they may increase your risk of breast cancer. The answer is true. Last question, COCs neither increase nor decrease the risk of ovarian cancer. The answer is false. COCs decrease the risk of ovarian cancer. Now let's answer the STEM question. A 39-year-old woman has been using combined oral contraception since she gave birth to her second child two years ago. She's worried as her friend told her that OCPs increase the risk of cancer. The risk of which of the following types of cancer will significantly be increased with long-term use of oral contraceptive pills. A. Breast cancer. B. Endometrial cancer. C. Colon cancer, D. Cervical cancer, or E. Ovarian cancer. With this mnemonic, be careful, we know that OCPs increase the risk of breast and cervical. So we should easily eliminate B, C, and D. And you have just increased your chances of getting the correct answer to about 60%.
between breast cancer and cervical cancer. Based on studies, combined oral contraceptive pills increase the risk of breast cancer to only a slight percentage, about 20 to 30 percent. However, latest studies suggest that it is not only combined oral contraceptives, but also progesterone-only pills increases the risk of such cancer. Now, much more significantly is that there is increased risk of cervical cancer among women using combined oral contraceptive pills for more than 5 years of use, and it even doubles if used for more than 10 years. The first theory is that women who use oral contraceptive pills tend to have more frequent unprotected sex, thinking that they are protected from getting pregnant, but in fact, it's not 100% effective, thereby increasing their risk of acquiring HPV, the most important risk factor for cervical cancer. Second theory is that there's alteration of normal cells in the cervix and disruption of the protective lining, thus increasing susceptibility to HPV infection. If you want to learn more about cervical cancer screen testing, I highly recommend that you watch our video, as this topic may also come out in the AMC exam. So between breast and cervical cancer, the correct answer is letter D, cervical cancer. Another type of OCP is that which contains diethyl stilbestrol, a specific type of estrogen hormone also used for contraception. The question reads, the use of diethyl stilbestrol during pregnancy increases the risk of which teratogenic effect? A. Renal malformation B. Optic atrophy C. Vaginal clear cell adenocarcinoma D. Epstein anomaly or E. Neural tube defects. A. Renal malformation is associated with ACE inhibitors. B. Atrophy is for warfarin. D. Abstain anomaly is associated with lithium and E is associated with folate antagonists, specifically antiepileptics and methotrexate. The answer is actually letter C, vaginal clear cell adenocarcinoma. Another question, a 29-year-old woman presents to the emergency department for worsening right upper quadrant abdominal pain. Her condition started two days ago with no associated fever, vomiting, or bowel changes. She has a normal BMI with no other pertinent physical findings. Her current medications include only oral contraceptives. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? A. Liver abscess B. Dengue fever C. Gallstones D. Hepatocellular carcinoma or E. Hepatic adenoma A. Liver abscess is incorrect because this condition is usually associated with immunocompromised patients or are susceptible to contracting organisms that cause liver abscess. It is also associated with amoebiasis, which may present as diarrhea or nausea. It is also commonly found in tropical countries with poor sanitary conditions, which are not mentioned in this case. Letter B, dengue fever, is also incorrect as there is no mention of travel history to endemic areas, and also no symptoms such as fever, headache, rash, jaundice, or retroorbital pain mentioned. Although dengue fever can also present with abdominal or right upper quadrant pain due to the hepatotoxic effects of the virus, the absence of the pertinent findings in this case makes it less likely. Letter C, gallstones, is a less likely diagnosis in this case. Remember the mnemonics for gallstones and that's fat, female, 40, and fertile. Letter D, hepatocellular carcinoma, is also incorrect since there is no mention of prior infection of particularly hepatitis B or C. It does not also state significant alcohol use. 
Letter E, hepatic adenoma, is the answer. Hepatic adenoma is a rare benign tumor among those who use OCPs or anabolic steroids. The lesions usually remain asymptomatic until they spontaneously rupture, resulting in abdominal pain. Complications may include spontaneous rupture and hemorrhage, especially when the lesions are large, or it could undergo malignant transformations into hepatocellular carcinomas. Now, the CD of the abdomen is usually requested to better characterize liver lesions. Findings may have changes consistent with hemorrhaging, evidenced by hyperattenuation of the lesion, as pointed by the red arrow. This, as you may have noticed, is the stomach and not the lesion. The AMC, most of the time, if not all the time, present images along with the questions. In our next videos, we'll go over all the images found in the AMC handbook. So please subscribe so you can be notified when we've already posted it. Thank you.